Yeah, I hear you, man. You are externalizing. I hear that too, brother. And you are externalizing. Yeah, well... You may only be speaking metaphorically, but guess what? You are still externalizing nonetheless. When we talk about deconstructing our preset conditioning that dictates to the consciousness where to focus the attention, it's important to understand just how crucial this maneuver is towards redefining the old description of reality with the truth of existentiality. And this is no easy task, for the old description of reality is deeply ingrained into us, and we are even trained to automatically defend its position without giving such fortifications any thought. So you can clearly see why, despite a possible initiative to undertake such an endeavor, that it's going to be a very difficult task to employ. Indeed, it will be a very arduous road to take. But do yourself a favor and don't waste time trying to take any shortcuts for they don't really lend towards accomplishing the objective at hand. This is most usually evidenced by assumptive efforts to try and circumvent various paraphernalia of indulgence. But this is misspent effort, for the way to master cravings is not attained by avoiding external objects of desire. Remember, avoidance, despite the impression of refrain, is still an attachment. For it still invests in the desire for a specific outcome, and therefore isn't conducive towards the necessary detachment required to facilitate the sublimation of the attention. The attention must be redirected by way of applied implementation. And so the awareness must learn to do this empirically. So it needs attachments to practice on. Removing the objects of desire doesn't get the job done. And forcing someone to do what they don't want to do because someone thinks that they know better than someone else won't get the job done either. It has to be a willing enterprise that is fully prepared to confront obstacles and address them accordingly. So the way to begin to reel in the attention, so to speak, is to reframe how we believe reality is produced. We are conditioned from a very young age to overlook our own awareness, the conduit from which the stream of projections manifests, and to focus exclusively on the reflections that is, the so-called external phenomenon. This conditioning is what is known as externalization. It's a conditioning that takes no responsibility for reality due to a false outlook that distances itself from that which is looked upon. Hence, imaginary separations are established, and the facets of existential reality become compartmentalized, and therefore are, for all intents and purposes, no longer recognized as existential, therefore de-emphasizing the attention from its own agency 
and redirecting it towards getting stuck on the projected perceptibles, which are no longer seen as projected reflections and thereof are only appreciated as externally existing fixed configurations of content. From here, the delusions of illusion are inaugurated. This is where the finger is pointed outwards from, in an attempt to explain that which is being manifested from the mind. And when I say mind, I do not mean any ingredient of reality. Whenever I say mind, I am referring to that which precedes the body, the brain, the emotions, and the perceptions. This is where it begins to become very difficult to navigate our way back out of towards the truth of reality. And by the time we come of age and are in a position of increased autonomy to do so, it is often already too late. Then it becomes a matter of intervention, which is where I come in. And I say unto you, stop pointing outwards. Stop searching outwards. Stop blaming outwards. Stop externalizing. You are looking in the wrong place and are concerned with exactly the last place that needs to be addressed. You may explore the external world from here to eternity and search through content from soup to nuts. But all you will be really doing is sifting through layers of appearances. Understand that the spiritual journey doesn't even begin until you start to look introspectively towards the source of all these things. Look inwards for the source. Sage, it sounds like you are saying that men are gods. What men? What gods? These are both equally inventory items of illusion. Obviously, men are not gods, for we are limited and very powerless. But that's mainly due to the self-imposed mental enslavement. The kind of mental slavery that looks to assign power and authority to some external property. And looking outwards towards external properties will only trap the attention further and further. For this is the nature of details. They ensnare you and reveal even further details to sink you deeper and deeper and deeper. And it never has an end. For every answer illusion provides, ten more questions will arise. And all the while, the vehicle from which you are operating, of which you only have a limited time to negotiate the situation, rapidly fades away. And before you know it, the end of your form will have arrived and you will die chasing phantoms. So this is why it is important to make some tracks redirecting the attention. So far, you have only shifted your attention between a variety of different inventory items. 
And I am not asking you to focus your attention on yet another inventory item. I am asking you to redirect the attention towards itself. Not to yourself, but to itself. Meaning, not towards your ego or your personification, but towards awareness itself. This is all part of understanding the nature of potentiality. You don't get caught up in attaching to its appearances. If you do, you will certainly be at its mercy, which in itself is yet another distraction that snares the attention as it reinforces the idea of the inventory by verifying itself to the attention via contention. This is another trap for fighting against the external while overlooking its root cause doesn't improve one's chances of self-recognition, which in turn further convolutes the situation by the inevitable use of deductive reasoning based on premises that simply aren't true. And before long, one will be fully entrenched in the game of grasping and avoiding whilst fighting adversity, all of which keeps one mired in illusion. As with details, adversaries will increase the more the attention is placed towards them. This is where people find a plethora of excuses for not looking inwards. Introspection isn't going to stop the tyrannical governments of the world from spreading corruption and seeking to enslave us under a draconian rule. Introspection isn't going to put food on the table, nor provide any practical means by which to make the world a better place. Can you see how these are the wrong areas to address? These concerns can be dealt with by you personally, by looking towards where they originate from. This realm is a training ground, not a place to seek repose and security. This realm is necessarily going to stick unfairness and injustice in your face any chance it gets. But this is exactly the trick used to fixate your attention on the perceptibles and keep it away from the truth. Almost everything in life is this type of device. But what about the conspiracies, the symbolisms? The phonetics, the double meanings, the anagrams, the ancient texts, the evil that seeks to enslave us. <sighs> you are reading into the inventory items way too much. All the language, memes, and symbols reflect the psychology and the zeitgeist of your current state, which is manifested as a world full of confusion, paranoia, demonization, and righteous indignation. These are all the apparatuses of your addiction to externalization. Hence, the complaints about all of this is more of the same. Scheming ploys to try and get the conversation right back on the external inventory again. Look, it doesn't matter how dramatic you try to make the cosmic horror narrative out to be. 
It's still a projected externalization of the inner state that created it. All of these types of assertions are insights into your own subconscious mind that you are projecting outwards and alienating from yourself as external phenomena. What else do you need to know? You want to address these issues? Then look within yourself. The outer world is a reflection of the inner condition and the inner predilection. The crux of your misunderstanding, the linchpin to your entire disempowerment, is the conditioning that makes you believe that you are a byproduct and not the source. This is the spell that everyone is under. And what's that you say? No matter how much you believe that externalizations originate from within you, nothing you do within yourself is going to stop what's actually occurring on the external, and that this belief does not change the situation, but only how the situation is viewed? No, you don't know that. Because it's only a matter of belief and not the result of realization and experimentation, do you chalk it off as such? If you had the actual knowing of it, then you would see and experience how you can mold what's occurring on the so-called external. Those who know about the nature of Source have a task that is almost insurmountable, especially since they are in slim company. People all start out deluded, and then some wake up. But the quest isn't found in making illusion more comfortable and ideal. The quest is found in simply waking up yourself. And then assist all individuals towards the same. No projection can allow or disallow you to wake up. It can only, at most, distract you and invite you to get lost in it for a while. And whether or not you do is completely up to you.